Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California. And this is going to be a six-part series on a topic that I think everybody is going to find uh, very helpful and that is on anterior ceramic veneers. Before we get into the preparations, I want to go over the fabrication of preparation guides. So part one, preparation guides. And for the preparation guide, we're going to be utilizing a product called Lab Putty. It's made by Coltine. And this particular product is a condensation silicone. And it comes with a base and a catalyst that comes in a separate tube. The product is uh, relatively inexpensive and can be obtained in smaller quantities than this or very large quantities. You can buy these huge tubs that are about two gallons in size. But this product here is very effective for making preparation guides. I don't like it for making provisionals because it is a condensation silicone. It's not quite as accurate as a PVS material. And so for provisionals, which will be in the last part of the series, we'll show you how to use the uh, PVS material for that purpose. But for preparation guides, this is great. You're going to want to also have a blade. And the one I have here is a scalpel that's like a lab knife. This is a number 11 blade. It's a straight blade. Uh, you can have these on a lab handle. Uh, but I don't like using the curved blades for this particular purpose. We want to use a start uh, straight blade. So uh, for most uh, maxillary cases, uh, two scoops is going to be more than enough. Uh, it's better to have a little extra than not enough. And so we'll go ahead and just take out a fairly level measure of the product, two scoops. And then uh, we're going to then add the catalyst to it and uh, mix it up. So let me show you how this, this works. We're going to just mix them into a little ball and then flat it out on the tabletop one little stripe across there and mix with your gloves. Uh, you don't want to do this with your gloves off because the material can get into your fingernails and discolor your fingers for a long time, uh, that catalyst. And you notice how we wrapped it over the teeth in a manner which uh, went from the facial to lingual. We don't just plop it on top and when then we shape it into this U shape that's re relatively smooth. You always have to remember that this has to go into the patient's mouth. This is not something that should be made uh, in a bulky way. Uh, so many of the prep guides and provisional stents that I see posted on the internet or shown in other lectures have very little regard for the patient and these huge bulky contraptions are, are tried to be uh, placed in the patient's mouth when in fact that just doesn't work. And one of the things I know from doing these for over 30 years is that you need to make things patient friendly. This is another way to trim these, and this is a coarse acrylic burr. This is available from Brassler and many other companies. And we can use this to trim the stent back to a more uh, smoother and uniform shape if we so desire. So uh, let's go ahead and get started on the initial trimming of the prep guide. So it's uh, critical that you have a very sharp new scalpel. I like to use uh, sterile scalpels uh, on these simply because a lot of the laboratory scalpels that we have laying around are probably not that clean. And I like to uh, try to do this in a clean environment so that the stent is kept free of unnecessary debris and I just trimmed away a little bit of the gingival area of this and then I'm going to remove some of the distal uh, portions just to make the prep guide a little bit more symmetrical. I just think it makes it easier to go in and out of the mouth if it's symmetrical. We're going to even out this thick area along the facial and one of the ways you can do that is with a coarse burr this happens to be an acrylic burr that is the coarse type that can be used to trim off a lot of that excess. You can even use this on the model trimmer. It's surprising, I'm sure, for a lot of you that you can do that, but you can make them very, very smooth on a model trimmer. So I'm going to make a couple of incisions, uh, one between the premolars on one side that goes from the facial uh, towards the lingual, 
and then we'll repeat the same process on the other side. Keep in mind that the reason why we're going all the way back to premolars is that we're going to be simulating a case that would be premolar to premolar. If you only were going to be prepping lateral to lateral, you could make your incision between the lateral and the canine. Now the next move is to make an incisal cut that is going to try to transect the facial from the lingual by moving the scalpel along the interface between the facial and the occlusal or the facial and the lingual in the case of the anterior teeth. And uh, you can try to get this right down the middle of the incisal thickness and incisal edge. It's a little tricky to do and I don't believe that it's really that critical for our purposes here because we're going to be used, utilizing the stent uh, by looking at it from the occlusal view. That little piece we're just removing can be used for incisal reduction checking if you so desire. This is how the stent initially fits on the model and this would be a made off of a diagnostic wax up or the uh, duplicate of a diagnostic wax up. And what I'm going to do now is just trim off some of the areas that are extending a little bit too far into the palate. Uh, the stent, if it's inserted with these long extensions, can initiate a gag reflex in your patients. So we'd like to try to avoid any of those problems. And we want the guide to be stable and not too thin, and yet thin enough to fit into the mouth easily. So the next move would be to shave away some of the incisal areas so that you expose the incisal edges. And you can cut into the incisal just a little bit if you like. We don't want to go down too far because then we'll lose valuable information about reduction when we do our veneers in that particular area. And you can see that if you haven't cut back enough, you'll have these little interproximal tags and it's easy just to shave those off and, and make this a little bit more uh, user friendly. So uh, let's go ahead and put this back onto the model and see if it's really working for us. And now you can see that uh, this could be very helpful when you view it from this view to see if you have uh, any under reduced areas and any little tags like this can be easily removed. So I'm going to go ahead and use the coarse finishing burr and uh, fast forward and show you how I would trim this further. So we're just going to make things nice and smooth and uniform. Any little sharp edges I like to round off so that they're not catching on the lips going in and out and that they're a little smoother when the patient feels this in their mouth. This burr is great but it leaves a horrible mess so you need to work in a area where you can clean up easily. Now I'm using uh, a millimeter ruler to show you that I, I'm kind of assessing how thick I want this to be and probably about five millimeters right there would be the right thickness uh, on a finished prep guide. That'll be thick enough so it'll be strong and yet not so uh, thick that it would be uh, uncomfortable for the patient and you can smooth this off and make it fit in there easily. So now we're going to take this typical prep guide and we're going to do something special to it. We're, we're going to modify it so that we can determine the facial reduction not only from the incisal facial third but also the middle third and the gingival third of the preparation. And this is going to require making a couple of very careful incisions in this particular portion of the guide. I'm going to take the blade and I'm going to go from the gingival area up towards the incisal and I'm going to cut right through right here. Now you notice I didn't cut all the way across. That would ruin the guide completely because that little distal portion would break off. But I made the incision all the way through between the premolars and now we're going to take the blade and move across the incisal third of the facials and we're going to just 
push this in about a two, maybe a three millimeter thick leaf that will be located between that incisal third and middle third of the facial. And we're gonna bring it all the way across. But on this other side here, we did not make that releasing incision. We just left it solid so it won't fall off. And then we're gonna just repeat the same process for the middle third area. And I think that some of you are probably already kind of figuring out what this is all about. We're gonna create this dynamic prep guide that allows us to determine adequate reduction not only in the incisal third of the facial, but also middle third and gingival third by peeling back the leaves uh, when it's necessary. So the, the whole prep guide can be uh, handled quite easily at this point, and you can separate the leaves from each other, and you can see how they'll provide you with these depth cut indicators at various steps of the preparation. So you, you now have all the leaves assembled and you're just using it to determine facial reduction from the incisal third. And this would be facial reduction from the middle third and then facial reduction from the gingival third. You don't want to make the stent too thin because these leaves can break off. You don't want to yank them too far away from the tooth, otherwise it can separate from the unreleased side. But I found these to be very effective and I use them routinely for veneer preparations and for all ceramic preparations when I have a diagnostic wax up that I'm working from. So here it is just a little bit closer and you can see that uh, you can easily determine the amount of reduction that you're doing in various portions of that facial uh, as we're uh, going through the preparation. So thanks guys for watching. In the next videos we're going to be discussing four different prep designs, the facial veneer on tooth number seven, and then I'm going to talk about the incisal butt veneer on tooth number eight, and then show you the preparation for the lingual wrap on tooth number nine, and then finally we're going to discuss the indications for something I called a super veneer on tooth number ten. After that we'll have another video on provisionals, and I'll show you at least two or three different ways to make provisionals for veneers. Anyway, it was great to spend some time with you. Please uh, comment, uh, like, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.